Now, the Pu'o eruption began on January 3rd, 1983. It reached its 31st uh, eruption uh, onset, 31st anniversary of its onset just a few days ago. And it started as most eruptions on Kilauea start, and that is as a fissure eruption. We have this long fissure opened up on the rift zone, middle part of the east rift zone, extended about six miles long across the middle part of the east rift zone. For the first few months, the eruption jumped around to different parts of this fissure system. And then it wasn't until about June of 1983 that the eruption finally focused at a single point, a single vent, which, uh, which we later named Pu'uo'o. And then once it focused here, the eruption began producing these very high lava fountains. Now, these fountains were episodic. They occurred about every three weeks. And each one lasted about a day. And they reached up to heights of up to 1,500 feet. So really huge, huge fountains of lava. You can see all this material falling out. This is the material that's cooling, falling back to the ground. And on the downwind side of the vent, we produce this pyroclastic cone. It's a cone composed of all these cooled, solidified particles of lava. In addition, there's also spatter falling back to earth, molten material falling back. On the other side of the cone, the material falling back was actually feeding these large uh -uh lava flows. Now these uh -uh lava flows, you guys I'm sure have seen them, they're the very rubbly type of lava. These are very large flows, fast moving, high, high eruption rate flows. And while these fountains were active, they fed flows that were able to travel several miles and some of them actually reached down into the Royal Garden subdivision. And several houses were destroyed in this subdivision, built um, several miles down slope from, from the volcano. Now, to give you guys an idea of what these uh, flows might look like, this is a low quality movie. It was transferred from beta to VHS to Hi8 to mini DV to my computer. So it's gone through lots of conversions, and it's not the best video, but it shows a really cool uh -uh flow coming down through Royal Gardens. And it's sped up, so this is not how fast they move. But you can see this, the way these flows move, you have a molten core. And then as this core moves forward, the crust that's surrounding this molten core is ripping into pieces. Those pieces are being carried along and then shed off of the front and the sides of the flow. And the flow just keeps burying the material that it sheds off. And of course, it buries whatever gets in its path. And that's just looping here. I like when that big boulder comes down and cracks into the truck. That's pretty cool. So in the first three years of the eruption, this is the part that was characterized by these high lava fountains and these lava flows. The area here in red is the area that's covered by lava flows during this phase of the eruption. You can see these are all you know, where lava flows stream down slope into Royal Gardens, which sits right in here. And then and there's other flows that went off in the other directions. Most, most of the activity is focused toward the, toward the east, which is in the downhill direction. Throughout this talk, I might refer to downrift and uprift. And just this is a good time to point that out. When I say downrift, I mean down toward the east, away from the summit. When I say uprift, I mean toward the west or toward the summit. So in the three years of the high fountains were active, um, 16 structures were destroyed. And that was from these flows that came down into Royal Gardens here. 